Some castles were so perfect that they seemed impregnable and could never be taken by a storm. But I don't think there was ever such a thing as a perfect castle. All of them had some weakness or other if an attacker was sufficiently determined. A castle that seemed perfect, at least to its builder, was Chateau Gaillard, raised in only two years in the 1190s by Richard the Lionheart. It perched high above the River Seine, guarding the road into Normandy, of which Richard was Duke. Richard spent a fortune on the project, employing a huge team of miners, stone cutters, quarrymen, masons, lime workers, carpenters, smiths, hodmen, water carriers, soldiers to guard the workers, diggers to cut the surrounding ditch, and carters to transport the raw materials to the castle. There's no mention in his accounts of a master mason. It's been suggested that Richard was his own architect. He'd certainly seen a lot of good models during his time in the Holy Land when he was one of the leaders of the Third Crusade. Richard was certainly present to supervise the work and to make sure that it was done on time. He worked them so hard that one day they were drenched in a rain of blood. Richard refused to accept that this was an evil omen or to slow down the work. In fact, somebody remarked that even if an angel had descended from heaven to urge its abandonment, he would have been roundly cursed. Behold, how fair is this year old daughter of mine, said Richard. Later, he boasted that he could hold the castle where the walls made of butter. Soon it was finished and for the remaining months of his life, it became his favorite residence. He called it his fair castle of the rock and signed his letters from here. He was right to be proud. His castle was considered the masterpiece of its time. The main purpose of the castle was as a symbol of Richard's power and as a way of cocking a snook at his greatest enemy, King Philip of France. Hence the name by which we still know it today, Chateau Gaillard. Gaillard in the Norman dialect means lively, vigorous, or perhaps even saucy. Anyone attacking Chateau Gaillard would have had to take three baileys in turn. The walls of each bailey are studded with round towers, so every inch of them could be covered by the defenders. Chateau Gaillard was one of the first castles in Europe to use machicolations, stone projections at the top of the wall with openings that allowed objects to be dropped on an enemy at the base of the wall. This was another innovation from the Crusades, replacing the wooden galleries of before. So how did Chateau Gaillard fare when put to the test, as it was soon afterwards? Richard's successor, King John, failed dismally to defend Normandy against King Philip of France. In September 1203, Philip's army laid siege to Gaillard. For the defenders was the town below the castle. It was called Les Andelis. The people of Les Andelis were terrified of the army of ravaging French and poured into the castle for safety perhaps over 2,000 of them. There were only limited supplies in the castle and these were rapidly consumed. The castellan, Roger de Lacy, decided he would have to get rid of 500 of the least useful civilians and these were allowed to pass through the French lines unhindered. And this encouraged Roger to send out another 500 a few days later. When Philip learned of this, he was furious. He gave orders that no further civilians were to be let through. Obviously, it was to his advantage if they were using up all the supplies in the castle. It would mean a shorter siege. When Philip expelled the remaining civilians, several hundred people, they were in for a nasty shock. The French loosed a few arrows to keep them back, but the gates of the castle were firmly locked and they had to huddle under the walls for safety. They were simply left there for three winter months to fend for themselves. Many died of hunger and exposure, eating the dogs that were let out too, and later, each other. It takes great ruthlessness to use civilians as pawns, as Julius Caesar did at Alicia. When Philip himself arrived in February 1204, he took pity on the survivors and gave orders for them to be fed and released. Philip was now impatient and ordered an assault on the castle. The French successfully undermined one of the towers of the outer bailey, one of the weaknesses of the castle it is, is that it is built on soft chalk. This made their work a lot easier. Ahead of them, however, yawned another great ditch 
and the mighty ramparts of the inner ward. There seemed no way forward till the, till the soldier called Pierre Boggy, snub-nosed, spotted a window, or was it a latrine chute, near the bottom of the wall that hadn't been blocked up, and the French were able to clamber through it, ambush some guards, and set fire to the buildings. They then lowered the drawbridge, and Philip's troops poured in. The defenders fought on fiercely until the 156 survivors had been disarmed and taken prisoner. Thanks to John, the whole of Normandy now lay at Philip's feet. So much for the castle that could be held even if it were made of butter. <laughs>